You're listening to Myers-Briggs Question Corner with Edith Richards. Hello, folks. Welcome to another edition of Myers-Briggs Question Corner. I'm Edith Richards, Myers-Briggs Master Practitioner, Career Counselor, and Founder of the DC-based consultancy, A Top Career, where we are dedicated to helping mid-career professionals find and sustain meaningful employment. This week's question is about building relationships through personality, and it's based on a question I received from a listener this week. Like many people who have recently learned about the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, this listener is interested in how to type her friends and family members and which personality types she's most compatible with. And I get it. For those of us who are really into personality types, it's very easy to fall into the path of typecasting someone. And what I mean by that is assigning certain characteristics to a person or assuming they like or don't like certain things solely on the basis of their four-letter personality type. I've talked about the danger of this a lot, but I want to stress it again. Just because you have a certain Myers-Briggs type doesn't mean that you're the same as other people who share your type. Sure, there are going to be some similarities, especially in how you approach life, things you may enjoy, people who you're naturally comfortable with. But it's important to remember that we're still an individual with unique traits and a unique life path. So I myself identify as an ENFP type. And just today I was chatting with a girlfriend who also identifies as ENFP. And I was struck by how different we are. We've chosen different career paths, though we both enjoy inspiring and motivating others. We both have very different tastes in music, movies, and books. And then there's our taste in men, completely different. But aside from these things, we do have different outlooks on life, and at least I feel this way, different lessons to learn from life. Yet we are both clearly extroverted types. We both get energized from being out there in the world. We're both intuitive, quite abstract in how we think about things. Uh, We enjoy theories and making connections and especially imagining how various scenarios will play out in the future. We're both feeling types. We both make decisions based, at least to some extent, on the impact on others. We're both very concerned about humanity and the state of the world, and we care deeply about our fellow human beings. And we're both perceiving types. We value our freedom more than just about anything else, and we hate being boxed in. We feel like we're at our best when we have a live and let live attitude. But the thing is that that attitude looks a lot different to her than it does to me. And that's okay. So I think when we're looking at personality, we have to be careful of not forgetting that we're still individuals. The Myers-Briggs is a system of measuring a binary distribution of four dichotomies of personality traits. And when we're looking at things like relationships, there's really no quantitative, accurate, scientific way to measure them. So when we look at the way the Myers-Briggs measures personality type, if you take the assessment, you'll note that for each question, you only have two choices, A or B. Of course, when someone reads that, they may be thinking, well, yes, sometimes I'm A and sometimes I'm B. But the assessment forces you to make a choice. It's then scored by prioritizing your choices, and then you get your four-letter type. Real life and real relationships just don't work that way. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Any two people of any Myers-Briggs type can have a happy, healthy relationship. Now, a lot of criticism comes from this. Inevitably, people will ask, Well, what's the point of taking it then? Why even bother with personality types? And here's my response to that. The point of taking the Myers-Briggs or any personality assessment isn't to diagnose or predict. And I think that's the danger of the world that we're living in. We rely so heavily on data. And I get it. There's a certain comfort in having facts and data and being able to pinpoint what's real and truthful. 
But when we're talking about something as fluid as personality, there's really no way to quote unquote measure it. I think the best reason to use the Myers-Briggs is to facilitate a discussion and get people to become more self-aware. And self-awareness is one of those things that's most obvious when it's absent. If you're not even aware that you're turning people off, for example, how are you even going to begin to change? And that brings me to another point about the assessment. It's really important to go through it with a certified practitioner who can put it into perspective for you. It's one thing to take a free online test and find out your type. And that's where people mistake the Myers-Briggs for being akin to a horoscope, which it is not. Someone who is knowledgeable about personality types and theory will be able to relate the assessment to where you are now at this point in your life and to help you understand how you've gotten to this point, why you've made the decisions you have, relate it to whatever you're struggling with now, and even help you to put together an action plan to help you move forward. So back to building relationships based on personality. One of the common questions I get is about relationship compatibility, either work, family, or romantic relationships. I tend to believe that the more similar we are in personality, the easier it is to connect with another person. But I also admit this isn't always true. Chemistry and compatibility goes way beyond personality type and anything the Myers-Briggs measures. But I do admit that when I meet another ENFP personality type, more often than not, I can very easily make a connection and I just feel like this is one of my people. And that feels good because that person gets you. Now, it doesn't mean that I haven't felt that way with other types. And it absolutely doesn't mean that if you're in a relationship with someone completely opposite, that the relationship is doomed to fail. I've been pretty upfront about my own relationship with my ISFJ guy. If you go online and read about compatibility of ENFP and ISFJ, it doesn't look good, but it works for us and we're both really happy. Not to say that there haven't been challenges. There will be challenges with any two types, even with two people of the same type. At the end of the day, we are all unique individuals with unique struggles, but I think the value to the Myers-Briggs is how it helps us understand ourselves better. And in that understanding, we can start to see some things about our inherent nature that have helped us move ahead in life and some things we need to work on and why we've gravitated towards certain tasks and certain people. One way the Myers-Briggs has helped me in my relationships is something that's called flexing your style. So that means adapting your own natural style to other people. For example, coworkers or customers. It can be very simple, like observing behavioral cues from people and gradually adjusting your own behavior to better reflect that person's style. Sort of like mirroring. I've found it helps a lot with people who are different from me. It helps us forge better communication and understand each other better. The downside is that it's pretty exhausting. We're all human after all, and we want to be accepted for who we are most naturally and comfortably. So of course we can't do this all the time every day. But if we can get better at pausing our brains and tuning in to the other person to try to understand their point of view, it can really help in building bridges. And let's face it, with everything that's going on in the world right now, these are attitudes that are so needed. To sum things up, the Myers-Briggs assessment has so many uses in business, education, and in personal relationships, from team building to facilitating communication, motivating employees, leadership development, career development, just to name a few. When it comes to relationships, a lot of misunderstandings can pop up, which can lead to conflict if each person doesn't understand why the other person does the things that they do. By understanding our inherent personality types, we're much more likely to be tolerant of others and become more aware of ourselves, 
which will lead to happier and more productive relationships long term. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you have a question you'd like me to answer on air, please get in touch at www.atopcareer.com. And if you like this episode, please do me a favor and share it on social media and subscribe to Myers-Briggs Question Corner on your favorite podcast platform. Be well and stay safe. Thanks for listening to this episode. If you'd like to hear more or you'd like to submit a question yourself, then you can find us at www.atopcareer.com. Until next time. MBTI and Myers-Briggs are registered trademarks of the MBTI Trust.